MongoDB is a document-oriented database that fits into the family of NoSQL databases. In this video, we will spin up a MongoDB database using Docker. We will learn how to use Mongo Shell to create databases, collection, and write few rows. And finally, we will learn how to use a Mongo GUI web interface to interact with, with your database, essentially, right? It's because it's always easier, and some people prefer web interface over, like, you see, command line. So it, it depends on, like, which school of thought you are in. And uh, if you're new here, Welcome, my name is Hussein, and in this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. That said, let's just jump into this video. So the first thing I'm going to answer, the first question is like, why are we using this Docker thing to spin up on MongoDB? And that's a very valid question. And uh, as software engineers, guys, you will obviously experiment with a lot of software, experiment with a lot of database platforms. And having those databases on your laptop to experiment uh, can be a lot of resource heavy, right? You can install Postgres, you want to test MySQL, you want to test MongoDB. That will give you a lot of trouble because that will essentially consume a lot of resources. So what do you do? Use Docker because guess what? With one line of command, you can spin up a MongoDB container, which is like a jail where your application will live and cannot get out. So very well controlled, essentially, container, right? And that's what you do. And once you're done, you kill it and then you free up the resources. So with the one line command, you can just stop and start the container whenever you need it, right? And then now we have to do a MongoDB on container because guess what? We'll make another video to work with JavaScript and MongoDB to build an application, right? So that's essentially why we're doing it, right? So with that said, let's just jump into the video guide. Let's go to your command terminal. To, to start this video, you need Docker installed, right? And to know that your Docker is good, just type Docker here, right? And then if you got something, right, that means you have Docker installed. So to check that Docker is running, you can run Docker run hello world. Right? And make sure just you you can get something out of it. Hell world, yes. <laughs> hello world, right? Once you get this and essentially welcome hello from Docker, that means you're good to go and you have Docker installed. So you can exactly run that same command on Windows or or Linux or or Mac and it will work because I'm using Mac right now. But essentially that's what you're gonna do. So what do you do? What is the command to spin up? Here's what you do. First you start with Docker. I wanna run the container. So what you wanna do is the first thing you wanna do is what are you exposing here? Say so, and then what you do essentially is just the port. Okay, you wanna expose the port that the container is running on. And the reason is databases, every database uses the TCP protocol most of the time, and TCP runs on a port, and to communicate with a database, you need to expose that port. And since this, the containers are running in its own network, you need to kind of to map it between your host and the container. And to do that, you do this, dash P, right? And you give two numbers here. The first number, 2717 and the second number 27017 all right and now we're gonna explain it what's that so this portion of this right that let me zoom in here that second part of that is the port that is running on the container and ha this has to stay 27017 okay because that's where mongodb runs on by default right and obviously if you change that that's another story but this can be whatever you want, 27017. I just chose the default port as well, but this could be anything you want, right? So if you got an error, like you have, I don't know, another MongoDB database running on your laptop, you might get an error if you do this because you cannot listen in the same port by two applications, right? So 27017, and then I'm gonna use that. So you can choose this to be like 11111. And then what, what is next? The next is, Usually it's very good practice to name your container. I'm gonna call it MDB. And the reason you name your container dash dash name space the name of the container. The reason you to do that is like, oh, I remember my container's name is MDB, right? So if you restart your laptop, your containers are not starting by default. So it's like, hey, I wanna start my MongoDB. Docker start MDB, that's it. You started your MongoDB, right? Docker start Postgres, right? If you name it, if you have a Postgres container. And the final one is Mongo, right? 
and that's it. Mongo is the image that we're gonna download from the Docker hub or whatever it's called, the repository registry, where they have everything essentially there. So Docker, run, dash p, the port, the source port, right? Dash dash name, the MDB, and then finally Mongo. You run it and you wait, and that's it. This terminal is now occupied. There is another command to do a detached, so that, the, uh, for example, to run it and continue working on your terminal, but that's okay, right? Yeah, we lost this terminal. Ter this terminal is your database. I recommend having this terminal so, so you can see the traffic and other thing, right? So this terminal, as I said, you cannot use it. This is the where the database is running now, right? So let's go and open another terminal. Cool. So this is my database terminal. This is my just another terminal. All right. So here's the thing we want to do here. So we have a MongoDB database here running. So how can I prove it? What can I do, Hussein? Right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is there is something called Mongo Shell. And Mongo Shell is essentially the command line interface to interact with your Mongo. And guess what? This thing comes with the database. <laughs> but guess what? We cannot, there is two solution. We can install Mongo Shell on our laptop, right? But who want to do that, right? Who, who wants to do that? You can do that if you want to, but you don't have to. What, since the MongoDB shell comes with the MongoDB, which we have running, how about we enter the container and run it from there? We had an enter, I, I, as if we're like RDPing into the machine or the container, and we're gonna run the MongoDB shell right there, which will allow us to create databases and all that stuff. So this is the first approach. The second approach we're gonna explain, hopefully, if you can see a time card here to jump the, directly to there, is to use a Mongo DB client GUI interface, right? We're gonna do that later. But let's do that. So to to enter into the container, you would execute something, right? With something we called interactive terminal. So if you, in case I, I always forget it, that's why I give it a name. So interactive terminal. So docker exec execute dash it, which stands for interactive terminal because I want to be interactive with you, son, right? And you give it the container name, which was, what did we give it? MDB, MongoDB, and did we miss anything? Oh, yes, we missed very important thing. So yeah, you are executing interactive terminal on this container, but what do you want to run? right? You forgot to run something, right? You can do bash here, but we're interested in Mongo, right? And Mongo essentially is the, the shell command, right? If I do that, I am in, son. I am in. That's it. That's, I, I can start working right now, right? So let's do CLS here. And I am in the Mongo DB uh, shell. So if some commands I can do, show databases. That's one of the things I know, right? So here's how you create a new database. So we have an admin and config and local three database by default. What I want to do is create a database called Thunderbolt, right? Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. And when you do that, you will be switched to this database that is called Thunderbolt. And if you type DB, this variable, is now your database. DB is always your database, right? You can choose use test. And then if you do DB, you can in database is test, right? Let's switch back to Thunderbolt. Be careful that just using a database doesn't mean creating it. If you actually put something in it, then it will create the database. So MongoDB is not, they are not dumb, right? Okay, so now I have Thunderbolt database called the Thunderbolt. And the Thunderbolt, I want to create essentially the equivalent of a table in, um, in MongoDB. And they call, they're calling it collection. And I don't know if we explain what NoSQL databases is, but essentially NoSQL database has no structure or no forced schema, right? And they, and they can scale horizontally because they give up consistency on reads. And we talked about acid and transactions and difference between eventual consistency. I'm going to reference videos there, guys. Right, but essentially, there is no forced, hey, create table ID primary key and then name varchar2, 250. You don't say any of that, okay? Those are created for people who want to quickly give me a database, give me somewhere I can store my stuff. 
essentially my JSON documents. That's that's why why it was created, right? So let's do that. So we have a DB. I'm gonna do DB dot dot the name of the collection you want to create, which is the table, right? And then give it any name you want, right? I'm gonna create a table called employees because we don't have enough of those tables, right? Right. So I'm gonna create a table called or collection called employees, right? And uh, by default, I am going to insert something into that, right? And the, the, the act of inserting something into this table will create the table and the database, right? So I'm going to create insert many because I, I like this a lot. And insert many will insert essentially many rows, right? And then you can pass in an array. And here's the thing, cool thing, guys. This is JavaScript, which we love, right? And you can just pass in here. Uh, an object, right? And then uh, let's just, I think we can do that. Ooh, we made a mistake, <laughs> but that's okay. So we have insert an array with one object, essentially with nothing, right? So by default, MongoDB will what? Will create for us the one row and will give us an ID for that row as well, right? So we have an ID for free, right? So you get an ID. So now, Obviously, we did this. This is not what we wanted to do. We wanted to do more stuff. So let's go ahead and add information. And here's the cool thing: this is a completely different schema. The first row is different than the second row. So the first row is empty. The second row, I'm gonna give it a name. Uh, my employee has a name, and his name is Hussein. And the and the other property, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna give it an SSN, right? One one one. Okay. <laughs> The best SSN ever. And guess what? We just created it, right? So we have a name, Hussein, SSN. So let's create another one. Okay, how do you create another one? DJ Khalid, right? So I'm going to do this, right? It's getting ugly, guys, because we are in this terminal. But once we get into JavaScript, hopefully in another course or tutorial, it's going to become better. So Hussein, give me another thing. David, no, let's just use Rick, right? And then SSN222, right? So now I'm inserting, we don't want to insert Hussein twice, right? So let's do 333, and then let's create John here. So you can essentially create multiple rows if you want, and that will work. All right, so how do we list that thing, guys? How do we list? Show me, right? Show me. That's how you do it. Let's clear. And then db.employees. I think find, is that what's called, right? And then you can pass find, it's like, find me the employee that is named Rick, right? You pass in an object, essentially. There you go, we found it, and his, this is his SSN, right? And then you can also create an index on the name because there, obviously, there's no index there, right? You can insert as many rows and they don't even have to be the same schema, right? There is no schema per se here. So essentially, that, that's it, guys. You don't commit or nothing. We're just DB and then everything, you got it, right? It's pretty cool-ish, isn't it, right? So and, uh, and <laughs> another thing I want to mention is like you can, you can essentially build if you want to. You can, so you can build your own array in Mongo Shell, do that like that. And then you can say name, give me another name, a name, another name, Ali, right? I'm Arab, so I'm going to give you Arab names. All right, so SSN, we can do like one, two, three, four, and then we can do that, and then you can do that. You can write as much as you can, right? Name, uh, Edmond, SSN, then you can do that, and then you close, and then you can do, look at that. We just built a new array, right? And you can do, we called it A, so let's, let's guess what? Let's do that. DB dot employees dot insert many, and then just pass A. What? That's pretty cool, isn't it, guys? Right. So essentially, that's what we're doing. We're just building stuff and writing, and that's how you deal with the database, right? All right. How can I do a GUI, guys? Let's do a GUI. Let's exit first. I want to get out of this thing. And here's what I want to do. To do a GUI, there is a 
there is a repository on image called Mongo client, right? It's a little buggy in my opinion, right? But it's 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 whatever there. If you guys find any other GUI for MongoDB, let me know. I couldn't find anything else. So you do Docker run, same thing P, but that Mongo client runs on port 3000. So we can do this, 3000, 3000. You have to know the port, right? Again, this is the port that they are running on. This is what we're exposing. So 3000 works fine, right? And uh, that works, right? And the uh, docker run dash p3000, and we're gonna give it a name, obviously. Let's give it Mongo client. I don't know, anything, right? And here's the thing, Mongo client is the image. That's the guy's name, I think, or the repository name, and then Mongo client, right? The Mongo client slash Mongo client. Mongo, it was official. That's why we didn't have to do the slash thingy, right? So let's try this. And again, same thing. We have it running and it's working. Looks like it. Oh, it's, built, it's built with Node.js. I didn't know that. All right. So here's the thing. It was running on port 3000. We export port 3000. So when we go to Chrome or Firefox and just run port 3000, we'll see what we get. All right, guys. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to type localhost 3000 which is the port we exposed. You can type anything you want or if you want, if you expose it on another port. And we got it, right? So here's the bugginess that I talk about. Because I visited this page again, I had to go into incognito and do that, which is kind of kind of sucks, right? That's just one of the... So this is the NoSQL client, what do they call it, right? If I do client connect, right? And then I can connect to a database. Let's create one. What is it called? I'm going to call it Jose Mac. That's the machine that I have, right? And if you have secured and all that stuff, we don't have any of that. So the host name is Jose Mac, and it's running on 27017 by default. Whatever port you picked on that left side goes here, guys, okay? If you don't have 27017, then pick something else, right? And the database, default database to switch off, right? Switch on database. What, what was that database now? So Thunderbolt, yeah, Picacho, yes. Use. All right, let's connect. And double click and look at that, we're connected. We've been running for 800 seconds, guys. 800 seconds that you cannot give back, guys. 800 seconds watching this video. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and then all the metrics and rights and stuff, right? Connections because yeah, there is like a million users connecting to this database right now, right? 86 requests, why? I didn't do 18, 89 requests. Ooh, that's a lot of. All right, and here's the thing, right? Let's go to this guy. Collections. There's, it's our stuff. That's what we created. Employees. It's amazing, guys. And then you can essentially do the collections. Uh, that's the employees, right? Is it? Yeah. But we didn't switch to the database, right? Did we? Let's, let's switch to our database. Switch databases. Let's switch to Thunderbolt. Now this is ours. I told you this is buggy, man. All right. Let's just name find Hussein. We can do that. Execute. And we'll just say, hey, I found Hussein. Here he is. You can find not just necessarily by name, you can find by SSN. Right? I don't know, 111. Execute. We found it. That's me, right? It's a me. Yeah, Mario is a user name. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, so you get the idea, guys. All right, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. A little bit short, and I'm gonna use this because, I guess what? We're not just spinning a database and playing with it ad hocly, right? We will build an application that consumes this database and do some fancy stuff with it, right? So stay, stay tuned for that other video that will be coming soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys stay awesome.